Check your body fat at all. Do you think body fat skills are worth it or to get body fat percentage checked professionally? Body fat percentage scale, these are essentially numbers. Of the two, I prefer body fat percentage because it's more of an indication of health and where your body composition is at, whereas the scale can be completely deceiving. It's not a terrible idea to get your body fat percentage checked if you do have the goal of losing body fat. So if you want to lose weight, if you have a goal of weight loss, you essentially want to lose body fat. So it's not necessarily the scale weight that you want to see change, but it's the body fat percentage that you want to see change. So if you have the opportunity or if you can get your body fat percentage checked, it could be beneficial because it's going to be telling you over time how your body composition is changing. Your body fat percentage can change without the scale moving at all. I've had this happen to myself. I've seen it happen with many of my clients. Their body composition changes, their clothes fit differently, they look better, they feel better. All of these positive changes happen, but the scale stays the same. So that's usually an indication of body fat percentage changing, more or less uh, muscle can be changing as well. Getting body fat percentage checked could be beneficial as long as you don't get too tied up into that number itself. So if you start obsessing about your body fat percentage, if you start obsessing about any numbers in general, I would encourage you to step away from them. But it can be a good indication of progress. It can let you know if things do need to change. So if your body fat percentage is slowly going down and then you hit that plateau and you see that it's the same and you want it to keep going down, you know that you can make some changes there. But again, if it hinders your life and if you obsess over it and it becomes your only focus, I would recommend against it. It depends on what you mean by professionally, but they do have certain things. I think there's bod pods. The biggest one is going to be the, uh, I don't know the name of it, but it's basically you, you dunk yourself in water. It's it's kind of a big deal. I don't know of, of any places in our area that do it. I've never had it done myself. And then you can also go to the uh, places where they have the in body, like I have at my gym and then at the health shop here in town. I might check with some local gyms to see if they have an in body. It's not gonna be the most insanely accurate, but it's gonna be more accurate than an actual skin caliper, like the pinch test, and it'll be more accurate than those handheld devices. So if you have a chance to get an in-body done, you can, and it would be cool because it shows your overall muscle mass. So um, that might be beneficial, but again, if you get too caught up in that number, definitely wouldn't recommend How it. How can I gain muscle and lose fat? I'm not skinny, I lift heavy, and I do cardio. I want to gain more muscle, but not fat. I don't like to track what I eat because it drives me crazy to track every meal that I put in my mouth. Gain muscle and lose fat at the same time. It's not the easiest thing to do to gain muscle and lose fat, but if it's going to be done, I think that the best way is gonna be strength training, eating enough, just being consistent and being patient. I tell you guys this all the time, there is no quick fix that's going to get you results that you want overnight. It's not gonna happen in 30 days, it's not gonna happen in just a few months. You have to be consistent and be patient. So I'm not sure how long this person has been lifting, consistently eating enough. I, it's, it's hard to tell if you are eating enough without tracking your intake at least for a few days. I don't expect everybody to track their macros as consistently as I have, but I do recommend tracking every now and then just to see about where you're at. Meal prepping helps you do that without having to log into my fitness pal all the time, then do it. But you do need to know if you are eating enough uh, to gain muscle and to help your metabolism work efficiently. So those are going to be some of the best ways to be able to gain muscle and lose fat, although it's not going to happen simultaneously for everybody. A lot of the time, if you are new to lifting and to working out and tracking your intake consistently or being consistent with a solid nutritional intake, you go through what people like to call as the newbie gains, and that's where you do gain muscle and you do lose fat, usually at the same time, um, at a pretty quick rate, the more seasoned you become with lifting, the more often that you lift, um, the more experienced you become, the more that your body adapts, the less likely this will be to happen. And that's usually why people in the lifting world will either focus on cutting or bulking because you have one specific goal 
rather than saying I want to lose fat and gain muscle at the same time it's easier and better just to focus on one or the other I don't have a specific recommendation the only thing that I can say is be consistent with strength training have a solid program that you're following give it time to work several months at least and be consistent with your nutrition whether that's tracking or meal prepping or tracking every now and then to make sure you are eating enough um, and then from there just give it time what certifications degree or experience have you had uh, for others who are interested in pursuing the same career as you if you guys have been following me for a while y'all know that i created my online coaching from scratch i worked i worked at an office job a couple years ago and as i started getting into lifting and doing my own research basically experimenting on myself and making my own transformation i started building my social media presence and from there i started getting inquiries about coaching and about online training i'd never done anything like that before i was creating my own program i was doing my own research i was really really heavy into researching program design and just soaking up every bit of information about training and nutrition that i could at the time i did bring on a few clients with the caveat with them knowing that i had never done it before that i didn't have any certifications i didn't have any prior experience and basically we were going to do this together they were like my little guinea pigs continuing on with them really really enjoyed what I was doing and eventually I had reached a point to where I started taking on more clients and I was able to quit my office job now keep in mind that this was Matt and I were both we both had our income so I wasn't doing this all on my own it was a huge support system of mine he encouraged me to basically take the leap of faith and and pursue my passion with the extra time that i had besides working with my my current clients my few clients that i had um, i kept researching i kept learning i bought a whole bunch of books i watched hundreds of hours of youtube videos regarding training programming and nutrition about your metabolism and your body and then eventually i decided to sign up for the nasm personal training certification this is what i would highly recommend for any new trainers or new coaches to start with and this is whenever i started training in person over at metroflex which was great and i enjoyed it but after doing that for almost a year it just wasn't where i wanted to be i actually slowly stopped doing in-person training and started focusing even more more than ever on my online coaching I focus as much as I can on the mental side of things. So if something isn't working in the lifestyle, I try and work with you guys on what you do see yourself being able to sustain and continue to benefit from long term. It's not just whether or not you can adhere to some workouts and some macronutrient goals. If this isn't working, why is this not working? What's going on with your life? What are you enjoying about the programming? What are you not enjoying? What can we change to help better fit into your lifestyle? And to be completely honest with you guys, I'm not re-upping that certification right now because it's not what I want to focus on with my career. My career, I want to focus more with my coaching on the mental aspect of fitness and health. NASM is great because it teaches you the basics. It teaches you basic program design, but what I want to delve into is more of an emphasis on mentality. Just all of the internal aspects of health fascinate me. And I've talked about this before. It just fascinates me how much your mind can attribute to your health as a whole. So what I'm doing right now is I am in search of a new program that I can get into to help further my knowledge of the whole lifestyle aspect of health and fitness outside of just the workouts. My approach has been more recently about accepting your body and body positivity and intuitive eating. I'm on the search for a new program for myself to get 
more knowledge and more information to help my clients even further. I'm so excited to keep learning and keep growing my coaching business, keep spreading that information to you guys. And if y'all have any questions about my coaching or what I've learned in my own journey and in my three and a half years of, of being an online coach, let me know in the comments, I'd be happy to answer. All right, so this last subject, it's not a question that I received recently, but it's a topic that I feel is very common concern for especially women, and that is cellulite. And I want to talk to you guys about it because cellulite is not a terrible thing. It does not make you less of a wonderful human being. Cellulite is merely fat underneath your skin, and as uncomfortable as it might make some people, it's just that, it's fat underneath your skin. Most women, as fit as they can be, have it at some area of their body. Uh, it's mostly common around the hips and the thighs because that's where women tend to carry our fat. I spent so many years hating what it looked like on my body when I didn't realize that the only reason that I hated it and that I was self-conscious about it is because the diet industry pushes this on us. You have to realize that it shouldn't be something you should be ashamed of, but the diet industry found out that they can market creams and lotions and products towards us in hopes of getting rid of something that's completely normal. We throw billions of dollars at these products every year because we want a quick fix for something that's not even really a problem. Like I said, most women have it on their body in some area, so it shouldn't be something that we should be ashamed of. I have it, I have it on my legs, I have it on my arms at certain angles, certain lighting uh, makes it more apparent, and I've come to realize that it's just part of my body. I know that I'm not unhealthy because I have cellulite. I'm very healthy, I'm very happy. Having something like cellulite shouldn't dictate my self-worth. Having more cellulite on your body might mean that you have more body fat. Some people, it might be healthy to lose a little body fat for them, but for the most part, if you have a little bit of cellulite on your body, don't let it distract you from your actual health. Don't let it disrupt your body image and your focus on your mental and physical health over all things. And I think the most important thing is just learning to embrace your body for what it is. It's become a reoccurring message on my channel because I've struggled with these things for most of my life and I'm very young still. But learning what I have up until this point, I can only hope to help you guys find that peace and that happiness with your body as well. Comment below if you have cellulite and are proud because I'm proud of my body. Cellulite and all. See you guys on Monday.